welcome viewers i am nilut pulsutia from the department of economics gorgaon college in this video i am going to discuss optimization technique with more than one explanatory variable uh, i am preparing this video for the undergraduate students of economics under the debrugger university this video includes the conditions of unconstrained optimization when there is more than one explanatory variable in the objective function I also add one example on how to use this unconstrained optimization in economics. Before going to the optimization technique with more than one explanatory variable, let us recall the conditions of optimization of the objective function with one explanatory variable only. So for a function y is equal to fx, the necessary condition of maximization of the function is dy by dx is equal to zero. And the sufficient condition is the second order differentiation of the objective function y with respect to x must be less than zero. On the other hand, for minimization of the function y is equal to fx requires the necessary condition dy by dx equal to zero. And the sufficient condition d square y by dx square must be positive or greater than zero. I request you to watch my previous video to know optimization technique with one explanatory variable in detail. Uh, let us discuss the optimization technique with uh, more than one explanatory variable. Uh, let us assume y is a function of m numbers of explanatory variables such as x1, x2 up to xm. Then the first order or necessary condition of the function y requires partial differentiation of y with respect to x1 explanatory variable must be equal to zero again partial differentiation of y with respect to x2 explanatory variables is equal to zero since we are dealing with m numbers of explanatory variables x m so partial differentiation of y with respect to x m is equal to zero and the second order or the sufficient condition is for a maximization problem the value of the Hessian determinant 1 must be negative, Hessian determinant 2 must be positive, Hessian determinant 3 must be negative. And since we are dealing with xm numbers of variables, so Hessian determinant up to hm, we will have to calculate the value of Hessian determinant. More precisely, for a maximization problem, Hessian determinant 1 must be negative. Hessian determinant 2 must be positive, Hessian determinant 3 must be negative and it will move on alternatively up to Sm Hessian determinant. Similarly, for minimization of the function y, it requires that partial differentiation of y with respect to x1 is equal to 0. Again, partial differentiation of y with respect to x2 is equal to 0 and if we are given xm numbers of uh, explanatory variables then partial differentiation of y with respect to xm must be equal to zero and the second order or sufficient condition for minimization problem is hessian determinant one must be positive that is greater than zero hessian determinant two must be positive hessian determinant three must be positive and this will move on and more precisely all the hessian determinants in case of a minimization problem must be positive now how to find out this hessian determinant a hessian determinant is a determinant whose elements are obtained by taking second order partial derivative of the objective function with respect to the explanatory variables of the given function i will show you the process of finding the hessian determinant with the help of an example later on for simplicity let us take only two explanatory variables x1 and x2. In this case, the maximization of the function requires two conditions. The first order condition is partial derivative of function y with respect to x1 is equal to 0 and partial differentiation of y with respect to x2 is equal to 0. Again, the second order condition is Hessian determinant 1 must be negative and Hessian determinant 2 must be positive. 
since we are dealing with only two explanatory variables x1 and x2 in this particular problem so we are getting only two hessian determinants here h1 is equal to f11 and the elements of h2 are f11 f12 f21 and f22 i will show you the de detailed process of finding out the value of f11 f12 f21 and f22 in the example now where to apply this optimization technique with more than one explanatory variable for example let us take the case of a discriminating monopoly the monopolist sells its total output q in two different markets at two different prices p1 and p2 since the monopolist allocates q1 and q2 levels of output in first and second markets respectively his total revenue functions in the first and second market will be tr1 and tr2 where tr1 is a function of q1 and tr2 is a function of q2 respectively and let us assume the total cost function is tc is equal to f of q where q is equal to q1 plus q2 so ultimately the profit function is tr1 plus tr2 minus tc now let us take a case of a discriminating monopolist how the discriminating monopolist will maximize its profit by selling its output in first and second markets let us take one example the demand function of a monopoly in two different markets are given by p1 is equal to 53 minus 4q1 and p2 is equal to 29 minus thrice q2 and the total cost function is c is equal to 20 minus 5q where p1 and p2 are the prices and q1 and q2 are the output in market 1 and 2 respectively again q is equal to q1 plus q2 so the first we will have to find out the profit maximizing output to be sold in first and second markets and equilibrium prices in the first and second markets and finally the maximum profit i request you to go through the srinath Barua's book basic mathematics and its application in economics let us solve this problem from the demand functions p1 and p2 we can easily calculate the total revenue in market 1 and total revenue in market 2 just we multiply the output with the demand function and we obtain tr1 is equal to 53q1 minus 4q1 square and total revenue 2 is equal to 29q2 minus thrice q2 square since the total cost function is given as c is equal to 20 plus 5q the profit function is i is equal to 53q1 minus 4q1 square plus 29q2 minus thrice q2 square minus 20 minus 5 all into q1 plus q2 so applying the first order condition of maximization of the profit function first we are doing partial differentiation of the profit function with respect to q1 equal to 0 so since the profit function we have already obtained we have to differentiate this profit function with respect to q1 and equated it to 0 so by differentiating this profit function we get 53 minus 8q1 minus 5 so by simplifying this we get 48 minus 8q1 is equal to 0 which gives q1 is equal to 6 so 6 is the output in market 1 now we are going to differentiate this profit function with respect to q2 by differentiating this profit function with respect to q2 we get 29 minus 6q2 and minus 5 by simplifying this we get minus 6q2 plus 24 is equal to 0 which gives q2 is equal to 4 so output sold in market 2 is equal to 4 now the second order condition of maximization requires that the hessian determinants 1 must be negative and hessian determinant 2 must be positive so let us check the second order condition now i am going to show you how to calculate the value of h1 
and h2 uh, since we have already uh, find out the value of del pi by del q1 and del pi by del q2 we assume that del pi by del q1 is equal to f1 and del pi by del q2 is equal to f2 now since h11 means f11 now how to calculate this f11 so f11 means we will have to differentiate this f1 again with respect to q1 so here we differentiated the value of f1 means del pi by del q1 with respect to q1 once again and uh, since the value of del pi by del q1 or f1 is 53 minus 8 q1 minus 5 so by differentiating it by q1 we get the value of f11 is equal to minus 8 so uh, the value of hessian determinant 1 is equal to minus 8 which is less than 0 let us calculate the value of h2 since f11 is already estimated now we'll have to find out the value of f12 f21 and f22 now how to calculate f12 f12 means we will have to differentiate f1 once again with respect to q2 and that means we will have to differentiate del pi by del q1 or f1 with respect to q2 once again since the value of del pi by del q1 is already obtained while dealing with the first order condition so we are differentiating it again with respect to q2 and by differentiating it we get the value of f12 is equal to 0 now let us find the value of f21 f21 means we need to differentiate f2 once again with respect to q1 so here we are differentiating f2 means del pi by del q2 with respect to q1 and uh, since the value of f2 or del pi by del q2 is 29 minus 6q2 minus 5 and by differentiating it with respect to q1 we get the value of f21 as 0 let us find the value of f22 f22 means we have to differentiate f2 with respect to q2 that means we are going to differentiate f2 with respect to q2 since the value of del pi by del q2 is already obtained uh, so uh, the value is 29 minus 6 q2 minus 5 so we have differentiated it again with respect to q2 and the value of f22 is equal to minus 6 so f11 is equal to minus 8 f12 is equal to 0 f21 is equal to 0 and f22 is equal to 6 and it is to be noted that f12 is always equal to f21 now calculating the determinant value of this determinant we get hessian determinant 2 is equal to 48 which is greater than 0 so when the output q1 is equal to 6 and q2 is equal to 4 second order condition is also fulfilled so the profit maximizing output of the discriminating monopolist is q is equal to 6 and q2 is equal to 4 let us find out the prices in the two markets p1 and p2 for that we will have to substitute the value of q1 and q2 and substituting the value of q1 in the demand function p1 is equal to 53 minus 4 q1 we get price in market 1 is 29 and by substituting the value of q2 in the demand function p2 is equal to 29 minus thrice q2 we get the price in market 2 as 17 then we will have to find out the maximum profit for that we will have to substitute the value of q1 and q2 in the profit function so by substituting the value of q1 and q2 in the profit function we get the maximum profit as 172 so by applying the optimization technique with more than one explanatory variable we find out the output in market 1 and output in market 2 and price in market 1 and price in market 2 and the maximum profit of a monopolist for further reference i suggest to go to the book basic mathematics and its application in economics by professor srinath burwa and i want to thank you for watching my video